Welcome back. This is still why in the morning. Thank you for joining us. The hashtag to use is why in the morning or if you like Hello Monday at Y254 at Stephanie Ayeta. Talk to us. We have asked you a question over there. But now it is time for our first conversation. Well, yesterday we celebrated the International Day of Families and today we are here to discuss something similar on that. We'll be talking about creating safe and nurturing uh, environments for children especially and how just to see how we can be uh, better parents as youths in future and for this we have the executive director of investing in children and societies this is Beatrice Ogutu. Beatrice, karibu sana. Thank you Miss Stephanie for having us on the show happy to be here and thank you for creating a platform for young people to be educated to learn mm. and to be entertained really happy to be here today. Well, welcome we are happy to have you too. So we want to know uh, how you celebrated the International Day of Families first before we get into what you do. Yesterday we spent time in the morning at church with the mm -hmm. family to celebrate and fellowship together with other Christians. In the afternoon we had family time mm -hmm. to celebrate together with our children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was especially important in this day and time when parents are so busy to even have enough time to spend with their young people. So we have to be deliberate and intentional mm -hmm. to create that time to spend with young people. So that's how I celebrated mine yesterday and uh -huh. I know my colleagues did so as well. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I don't know if uh, many people actually know that there's a day for celebrating families mm -hmm. uh, because not many people are really aware of it. So it's also good that uh, mm -hmm. you're creating the awareness. True. Yeah. So tell us about ICS, mm -hmm. uh, which is the initial for investing in children and the societies. Thank you, Stephanie. ICS, uh, we mm -hmm. all believe that all children should be able to reach their full developmental potential. And to do that, uh, we strengthen families, we protect mm -hmm. children, and we look at environments where children are. So the home mm -hmm. setting is one of those environments mm -hmm. where we work together with parents and caregivers in that environment to create you mm -hmm. know, safe and nurturing environments by way of training parents, educating them on their roles and responsibilities, empowering them with new skills to Mm -hmm. uh, raise their children in this modern day and age and connect them to services and economic opportunities so that they can also be able to address their stress economically that they experience at household level. Mm -hmm. Another environment where children are most of the time are learning institutions. So if you look from preschool to primary, secondary, our tertiary education, that's where our children and our young people are. Mm -hmm. So we work together with their leadership, with their teachers to ensure that uh, they are aware of what kind of uh, procedures and systems they need to put in place mm -hmm. to ensure that children are safe within those institutions. There is no bullying, there is no corporal punishment in those institutions and that there are guidelines that are safeguard children. But we also have a lot of life skills and mentorship opportunities for children and young people to learn critical skills in life, decision making, critical mm -hmm. thinking, self-protection, um, including sensitive topics like sex and sexuality, HIV AIDS prevention, violence prevention. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the platforms and then within the community, we work with the leadership, uh, community leaders, the chiefs, the religious leaders, uh, to just empower them to create systems to ensure that children are protected even while they're in the community. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. We work in close to 10 counties in this country, and we are really happy that the issues of families have also been brought to the fore within our government frameworks and policies. Wow, yes. okay. And just to relate it with career, mm -hmm. how do you think that you know the program through the training Mm -hmm. and uh, of the caregivers and parents mm -hmm. and teachers, mm -hmm. does it help in the development of these children as they grow up in terms of how they will, uh, you know, develop in their career? Yes, quite critical because we help parents in their journey right from when children are very young and encourage them to open those communication channels so that they can be able to inspire and encourage their children to dream more, to think more mm -hmm. and expose them to opportunities in which they can be able to learn not only at home but also within the education setting. So career guidance is one of those aspects that uh, is part of parental responsibilities but also our education system should be also to be able to explore 
expose our young people to different opportunities in this modern day and age that exists for our young people. We are also critical to see that our education system look at their courses critically so that mm -hmm. these courses should be able to speak mm -hmm. to the modern day opportunities that ex exist for young people. We know there is a lot of space in the creative uh, environment right now. Traditionally, you know, when you're in the entertainment creative industry, it was not viewed with the seriousness it deserves. Mm -hmm. But we are really applauding the talent academies that are coming up, either in the creative space, in the sporting space, so that our young people can be able to nurture and grow their talents and make money out of it. So those are some of the opportunities. We encourage parents to open the space at household level to discuss, mm -hmm. but also within the schools, so that beyond the traditional courses that we were used to, which are still quite important, being a doctor, a lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, those are quite critical. But then we are now opening the space and encouraging our parents to be a little bit more open and flexible. When your child tells you that, you know, I want to be a DJ, for example, mm. that is something they should be able to promote, nurture and encourage within the family setting. And then our talent academies should be able to open this space for our young people to be able to explore and nurture their talents as mm. well. All yeah. right. So you've said you're in 10 counties. Yes. So is that, are there specific areas in these 10 counties that you have targeted? Yes. Uh, critically, our programs have been in the western part of the country. So Bungoma, Kisumu, Siaya, Kakamega mm -hmm. are some of the areas that we are working with schools, uh, young people, children and their families. And also now in Nairobi, Kiambu, Machakos and uh, getting into Garissa and Kilifi as well. Mm -hmm. So these are all opportunities that provide us to engage with parents and caregivers to support them in their role, to give them more information that would help them navigate the complexities of raising mm -hmm. children and young people in this modern day and age. Mm -hmm. So those platforms have been created together with government and uh, parents are now accessing information. They're now brave enough to, you know, tackle. They're now conscious enough and deliberate enough to create that space and know that their role is important in nurturing our young people mm -hmm. for them to be successful and responsible in this modern day and age. It's also a platform that enables us highlight the challenges that families are going through. There are quite a number of uh, unhealthy relationships, dysfunctional families. I think during the COVID-19 season, we saw a lot of uh, op uh, cases of violence, domestic violence, family mm -hmm. violence, you know, f uh, violence against children within those settings. We saw violence against spouses, you know, in those settings. So these are also platforms we highlight what families are going through. And violence is quite a big problem in this country. Mm -hmm. And because people are silent about it, sometimes we never know about the magnitude and extent. So families need that support to address the factors that could cause them or make them vulnerable to abuse uh, within the household setting and to know which spaces they can report if violence actually happened. And we know our young people are, going, are growing in these environments. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a challenge because then we don't model as parents, you know, the healthy relationships that we should have, the, the respect that people should have within the household level. So if this is what the youth are experiencing that it's quite dangerous and there's a lot of studies that talks about if you witness violence as a child there's mm -hmm. a high level that you could be a perpetrator late because that is what you know that is, that is what mm. you have experienced and that is why you feel that life should go on in the same way. So it's mm. quite critical that we address some of these stressors in the household level, including economic stress. Parents are really going through a lot in this uh, wow. economy right now. Jobs wow. were lost as a result of COVID-19. Mm. People are struggling to keep their businesses afloat. So poverty is still a stressor. And mm -hmm. when violence comes in there, then things are a lot complicated. So a lot more um, issues need to be done to uh -huh. support families. And that is why the International Day of the Family is quite important. Set aside mm -hmm. to honor the family as a unit, as a basic unit of society, but also as a platform to highlight the challenges that families are going through mm -hmm. and what governments can be able to do to address those. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you go to... Um do the programs, how do you conduct the programs mm -hmm. exactly? Do you uh, gather parents 
for maybe a 10-week program, a 12 foot program, mm -hmm. how do you go about the program? Yes, when we get into a community, we mobilize and organize mm -hmm. parents into groups of 18 to 24. So mm -hmm. it becomes a peer support group um, and they're taken through a curriculum that we have developed, we have tested, and currently is being considered for adaptation by national government through the Directorate of Social Development. Mm -hmm. So they go through 10 modules for a period of once a week, for all those 12 weeks mm -hmm. and they're taking quite a number of uh, on a number of topics from family relationships to promoting communication within the families building self-esteem and inculcating values and discipline in children uh, we are talking about issues of preventing abuse and neglect within the household level we are talking about family budgeting and financial planning within the household level mm -hmm. we are talking about child developmental stages and what parents should anticipate at each stage and prepare themselves to support their children. We are also supporting parents to communicate confidently about sensitive topics that uh, we fear even talking with our young people. Mm -hmm. uh, issues of drug and substance abuse, issues of sex and sexuality, issues around, um, you know, career guidance. So we are opening that space and building skills and you know, with parents and caregivers, helping them reflect on how they are parenting and giving them the space to also get ideas from other parents. So that's how we organize parents in groups to mm -hmm. support them through that journey. But over and above that, we also have awareness sessions for the general community, either through community debating sessions. Uh, we also use uh, community media a lot in mm -hmm. the communities where we work. There are different media stations. And then platforms like this also help us to, you know, provide information uh, mm -hmm. to parents on how they can tackle certain things that they are going through. Mm -hmm. And you know from the programs that you have undertaken, mm -hmm. what are some of the gains that you've mm -hmm. seen uh, parents take from, from the program? The appreciation that you know there is a platform that they can be able to vent off. Sometimes it's quite mm -hmm. stressful to be a parent you yeah. know when everybody is expecting everything from you and then you don't mm -hmm. have a space to also re-energize, learn, reflect. So that is one of the things that is quite important. Parents are really appreciating that you know they're opportunities for them to vent off, to learn, to mm -hmm. learn new things, yeah. to complain, mm -hmm. and then get the information. But the most important aspects as well is the healthy relationships that we are modeling. Mm -hmm. We are helping them model within their homes. So between their children, they're opening those spaces to talk. You know, before mama yako akisema, amesema. Mama yako akisema. And our young people know this very well, you know. Yeah. Uh, Buddha akisema, ni mm -hmm. ivyo, You mm -hmm. know, so we're encouraging them to open that space so that young people can also uh, mm -hmm. share what they're going through and have that opportunity to get uh, um, supported and guided by their parents. We have also through studies, we have seen that the program is actually reducing rates of violence within the family. And this is violence mm -hmm. against children, but also violence against uh, women within the household setting. So if we are talking about how to nurture family relationships, how to open up communication doors, how to deal with conflict in the family without mm -hmm. necessarily fighting, you yeah. know. So those are some of the benefits. And then we have also seen the opportunity of uh, young people now to be free with their parents mm -hmm. and talk about about, um, you know, daddy, I like this, I don't like this, I would like to be supported in this. And children really working together with their parents and their teachers to promote academic achievement in school. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the opportunities that we have seen with this program. But then again, I think quite critical is also the sharing of responsibilities within the home. The okay. fathers are appreciating that, uh, you know, uh, mothers are actually taking on a lot and yeah. there has to be an opportunity to support in one way or the other. So modeling this this kind of healthy relationships mm -hmm. also is a springboard for our young people to learn that this is how marriages are. That it's not necessarily a bad thing. I know many of our young people are saying, Kama ni hivyo, wacha ikai. So I think we have a responsibility mm -hmm. as parents to model the right behavior, the yeah. right kind of healthy relationships, so that our young people are encouraged. Marriage is not necessarily a bad, a bad thing, thing, but what they experience and see could make them think, ah, ah, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it, uh, that's where the strengthening of families come come in. Yes. And now, you know, you've brought in aspects of, uh, you know, talking it out with their children mm -hmm. and uh, shared responsibilities 
the families. And this is something that is not, uh, you know, common in Afri in an African setup, especially mm -hmm. when you go to maybe rural areas, uh, maybe inside Western Kenya. Mm -hmm. So how do you really um, manage to transform their mindset? Because mm -hmm. that, you, you know, you go to get, you, you, get yes, mm -hmm. and you need to get to the roots <laughs> yes. so that you change that. So how do you do that? Miss Stephanie, it's a journey. It's not something we change in a week or a month or six months. Mm -hmm. When talk about deep-seated social norms, the way we live our lives as Africans from long time ago, and you're telling an African man, hey, you need to be able to help <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, your, like your, 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 has, your wife at the household level. So it's a conversation where we expose um, both parties, both husband and wife, to the general JD of a parent. What does it actually mm -hmm. mean to be a parent? And then they list all those aspects. Mm -hmm. And then we interrogate together with them. So among all these responsibilities of parenting, who does what and who does what. So they see the burden is actually on the mothers, a mm -hmm. lot of it. Traditionally, our fathers are providers yeah. and disciplinarians, mm -hmm. but there is much more to parenting than just providing and providing and giving discipline. Mm -hmm. So when they see the whole realm of responsibilities of parenthood and the burden that falls on mothers and what that means, and the fact that our mothers today are not sitting at home, Mm -hmm. they're, they're also working, working. so mm -hmm. how do they balance all these roles so it opens the space to communicate so mommy has all these things to do what will children support in mm -hmm. what will me as a father support him sometimes it's simple decisions like getting somebody in the house to support mommy in cleaning in cooking but money mommy has to supervise for example mm -hmm. is sometimes you know the father coming in a little bit earlier in the evening and supporting with homework as mommy does other responsibilities yeah. So it's, it's, it's the appreciation that there's mm -hmm. a lot to bring up our children. It has to be deliberate and intentional, mm -hmm. and both parties must work as a team mm -hmm. to make sure that this happens. So it's, it's not confronting men that you have to cook <laughs> as your wife cleans. You know, it's just appreciating the how can me as a man mm -hmm. come in more strongly to support my wife in raising our children. As she does one, I could be doing the other. It's a negotiation mm -hmm. that happens in the household level. And it takes time. It's not something you change in a month or two, but it, it, we have seen it happen. Uh -huh. that, and also just people sitting down and discussing as families. I know from long time ago, children were to eat separately. When daddy comes, they eat separately. So yeah. how then do you create that environment when there are times when the family just sits together, mm -hmm. talks together, and when that family meeting is called, the young people are like, oh no, what did I do? Or what did they discover? <laughs> yeah, we are in trouble today. So uh -huh. creating that culture of meeting, interacting, and creating space within the family to just be a family, discuss about family issues mm -hmm. so that parents are also aware and they're not shocked because sometimes parents get shocked when they hear mm -hmm. their young people have turned out differently, but they have not been available because of other circumstances. Okay. So it, it's something that really takes time mm -hmm. and we appreciate that um, men are now more involved um, and more supportive mm -hmm. and we really do appreciate and that's what we want to build up and, and nurture for oh. our fathers to be present. That and present doesn't mean you're just available there watching telly. Mm -hmm. You're present and trying to interact. Find out how school was. How was your mm -hmm. university class today? Is that course making sense? You know, mm -hmm. you have you those talk, discussions. You talk, have yeah. a conversation. Wow. Yes. So this is creating a good positive change, actually. Mm -hmm. But now, how does it work if only one parent, one parent mm -hmm. comes to the program and the other one is not interested? Yes. So does it really impact the family? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is true that most of the time when we organize parents for these trainings, one of them will come, either the mm -hmm. mother or the father. But the good thing is even one of, if one of them is able to be empowered and they're able to change, the effects will be seen at the household level. Mm -hmm. We have seen cases where, you know, when you talk about parenting trainings, the woman will come, the mother will come. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when they go back home, because the first uh, topics that we discuss mm -hmm. within the parent trainings are more about uh, family relationships and communication. 
So when they go back home, their husbands start seeing a bit of change in their women in mm -hmm. terms of improved communication skills. They are dealing with conflict differently. You know, there's Siba Banani, Nataka Inai. They have already been empowered in one way or the other to be able to address conflict, mm -hmm. to communicate better within the family, to create those spaces, to talk better mm -hmm. things that they were not doing before and then the man will be curious enough and say i think this is actually a good thing my wife is different yeah there's something you know, different they are us. not shouting anymore they are not quiet anymore they're mm. actually looking at uh, you know how to deal with this issue in a better way so mm -hmm. then they're encouraged to find out and they become curious enough to find mm -hmm. out where <laughs> i think i think i need to be there or she needs to finish all the classes but then there are also separate sessions we organize for men mm -hmm. so that even if they don't attend the normal group session then mm -hmm. there are different clinics we call them okay. fatherhood clinics that we have with men so when they meet at the household the man has learned the woman has learned and then they can be able to they work as a team they work as a team oh, and at the same time the life skills and mentorship sessions in school also mm -hmm. work together with children so you can imagine a family where the husband has attended a fatherhood clinic the mother has attended a parenting session the children are part of life skills when they meet together and there's that space mm -hmm. then think good things happen that's so that's the model we intend to create all yes right. so uh just in case you're joining us we are speaking with beatrice ogutu from investing in children and societies and we're talking about creating the safe and nurturing environments for the children and in turn strengthening the families so now we want to ask uh, how do where do the youths come in? Because maybe mm -hmm. someone is not a parent, but mm -hmm. in future there will be parents. Mm -hmm. So how do they come into this conversation? Um, in several ways. I've mm -hmm. said that if you empower parents, then they create that opportunity for their young people to mm -hmm. be part and parcel of their family and to air out the issues that they experience as young people, for parents mm -hmm. to be the guidance, for parents to be able to steer them in the right uh, place. So mm -hmm. when parents are able to support our young people, it becomes mm -hmm. quite important because if they find the home toxic, mm -hmm. you know the best uh, other option is their peers and the media. Yeah. So the parents should be the single source of truth in so many ways. And then their peers and then the media and other influences come on board. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a good space. But even when we are talking about primary and secondary school and targeting people with life skills mm -hmm. and exposing them to what they could be for them to dream more, you can imagine that girl, that boy, in the village who has never left their village and therefore any, everything they know is what is around them. Yeah. So giving them that exposure that it is possible regardless of where you're coming from mm -hmm. to become who you want to be and mm -hmm. giving them that space, exposing them to that education that mm -hmm. they need in terms of life skills uh, to be able to you know, have the confidence to take it on beyond their academics to also explore the talents that they have. Mm -hmm. So it's quite critical, but also highlighting to parents and teachers that these young people have something to give back. They are just not recipients of services, recipients of information, no, but they can also contribute to their own development if mm -hmm. we give them that space to be able to say, mommy, I can do this, mommy, I can do this, I can help you beyond household cause, you know, mm -hmm. within the household. So those opportunities really give and we have seen very young people grow up, uh, they were a bit timid because of lack of exposure, but now they're good in sports, they're, they're good in, in, in poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, we have young children who are now representing their counties in our county assembly. We have the children's parliament within the country. So we've nurtured a lot of young people to occupy spaces of leadership at their own level. And those talents have been nurtured through and through from their primary to their secondary. Mm -hmm. And if you follow them through, you just see they've grown up to be very responsible young people. So those life skills and mentorship sessions, we don't take them for granted. It opens the space for our young people to mm -hmm. thrive it and dream more, you know. It, uh, it prepares them for leadership position because, yes. you know, how we say we are the leaders of mm. Today, they actually say youths are the leaders of tomorrow, but we are the leaders of today. today. All right, so we'll continue this conversation. Let's take a short break and then we'll be right back. Thank you.